in uh, this uh, part, uh, since we're looking into different databases, I'm going to release the slides and so you can use it as a reference for yourself. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess let's go and actually visit some of the databases and uh, try to interact with them. And hopefully that's, you know, um, you know, more of joy to watch and then uh, try to uh, uh, follow up with the different uh, information that we have. So um, we discussed uh, earlier uh, structural databases. Uh, before that, we looked into sequence databases. So there are databases where sequences and sequence information, uh, micro, array, uh, uh, micro arrays, RNA-seq, all of these information uh, shared there. Structural databases like Unibrot and uh, Protein Data Bank and so on and so forth. Then we looked into drug databases and chemical databases. Now we're moving to experimental, experimental data, uh, experimental result uh, or experiments result database, databases. So what are those? OK, so here we will go with the first one. Let's look for uh, GEO database. OK. So gene expression, uh, what's called gene expression omnibus. Mm, uh, it is hosted by the National Center for Biotechnology of Information, that is NCBI, and um, it was established early uh, 2000. And at the same time, I want to also uh, show another example of a database that is called Array Express. Okay, Array Express. Okay, and Array Express, it is hosted by EBI which is now we know it's European Bioinformatics Institute. So one is from the States, one from uh, uh, Europe. OK, and this one was, uh, was uh, launched um, around 2002. So basically, um, um, both of these repositories, that is um, a da Geo Database and Array Express, both of these repositories, uh, are uh, uh, serving uh, uh, high throughput uh, genomics data. However, you know, the differences would be the origins, designs, and some data standards. Okay. So um, if one is interested in getting uh, experiments, uh, results, or experiment uh, sequence files, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, related to gene expression, for example, these are very useful resources to look into. OK, so let's um, uh, see how we can access some gene expression data. So I'm going to go to a gene expression omnibus here. And at the same time, I'm going to click on Array Express and both. Now, I want you to keep in mind something. All databases I've been showing in this presentation right from the beginning of, you know, interacting with module seven and so on and so forth. Like, I cannot say this is the best resource. OK, um, I've discussed this. They, some of those are initiative under initiatives under big, big centers or umbrellas. So all of them are very valuable. OK, are very valuable. So. If you're looking into certain experiment, why not to go and uh, search in both? Now I'm going to show you one thing that I've built a research project uh, uh, on uh, through uh, downloading some data. Uh, one of my areas of interest is looking into building um, a gene biomarker. Okay, uh, discovering set of genes or gene signatures that indicate or most responsive for a specific uh, condition or treatment. So in general, there are linear methods, nonlinear methods, machine learning methods. There are methods that are going to look into those response analysis. There are methods that are going to look into prior data and try to include that. Many methods when it comes to developing or finding out what is the most responsive set of genes uh, in a given setup. So I remember the student uh, came to me, said uh, uh, they want to move on with um, 
finding biomarker for radiation exposure studies. This was a couple of years ago, and you know this uh, was uh, a new idea, like exposure, radiation exposures. Okay, and um, as you know, sadly, what's happening next? We hear about um, Russia, Ukraine, and the war, and again. Uh, we hear these discussions of nuclear powers, uh, weapons, uh, radiation, and so on and so forth. So it was interesting that we already published uh, before we even get to this news. And uh, at the beginning, thought this like maybe it's not uh, of any application. But the signature that we developed is a list of genes with indicative uh, labels of upregulation and downregulations that can be used, okay, to. Um, indicate if there has been high levels of exposure in the area or not uh, and if that impacted the gene expression at any stage maybe that is indicated so anyway that's an area of research turned out to be an area of research uh, another scientist later on read our paper approached me and said you know we have done this and that and so you you could extend your work in that way so uh, that was very interesting, but of course, uh, I didn't have my own lab working on producing gene expression data for radiation exposure. So I asked the student to come to the gene expression omnibus, and there we extracted our data. So the reason I am telling you the story is to explain that those databases are huge. Array Express gene expression uh, omnibus, and the ones that we're going to show you next are huge okay so you can actually publish many many papers using those so let us put here radiation exposure okay study and see what's gonna what we're gonna get okay oops i got something okay let's look okay, 80 results and gene e expression on us let's choose the same term you can you know you have some examples here oh i have radiation exposure uh, already coming out as one of the listed categories. Okay, very interesting. So this is a Ray Express. Now, whatever I'm showing you, I have to show you many databases. So um, you'll see me just, you know, scrolling, skimming through them. But again, I'd spend time with them. And uh, if you're interested about a specific thing, uh, please reach out to me. So here you have, I have a list of results. You can see I've tried this before. So this is more labeled as purple color and let's look into this what we have here is 32 samples okay so let's go inside and see what is this data set and here what do we have here on array express on the other hand uh, gene expression that predict radiation exposure in mouse okay let me click here and see what i can access in both of these uh, you know huge repositories okay so in gene expression omnibus, here is a full report of the experiment type. So this is a high throughput uh, screening. And then if I scroll down, you get the summary overall design. Sometimes the list of papers that use that. Uh, here you go. So we have Illumina high sick 1000 homo sapiens. So uh, these are 32 samples uh, that we can download. So I can open this link here okay which is for this sample only and um we can download the count so this was processed this is not the raw data okay this is not the raw data is going to directly show the process data which is after you know uh doing running one of the alignment pipelines and uh, generating the uh, expression results which is nice okay so differential expression analysis was performed so we have expression results here and that's what's nice about gene expression uh, omnibus for example sometimes you find the raw data files like the fastq files sometimes you find many of the cases the uploaded processed versions of the data so if I go back here, this is, you know, you can access all of that information, download it. You find the labels here telling uh, us of the different uh, treatment conditions and so on and so forth. So um, Gene Expression Omnibus has also been growing and trying to develop interesting tools like Analyze with GO2R. So take the data set, take it to the R programming language and jump there and start seeing some, of course, what? We're gonna, we wanna see visualizations, right? So let me click on analyze here. 
down and see some um, maybe distribution of samples, genes, see if we can, you know, get some insights, more insights about this data. And here you go. So this is generated using R, which is nice. I don't know if, okay, I can click here and see this. Okay, this is the plot of samples, the 32 samples and how they distribute together. Um, yeah, this shows the number of counts with the logs. So which seems, so this data needs some normalization. There are slight differences here and so on and so forth. I would like to see also some labeling based on the uh, phenotypes or the uh, different treatment uh, groups. Uh, do we have some options here? Okay, this is for the statistical test, profile graph, and so on and so forth. It's going to give us the R script, which is nice. It's a good, it's a good starting point. Okay, it's a good starting point for the analysis that you want to do. Now I go. Let me move to Array Express here, where we have also very interesting data. And remember, those are showing gene expression data uh, that we can access and download. So I see here somewhere that we have 56 samples. OK, do we have the raw data accessible here? Essay and data, processed data. Uh, nothing is coming with me, so let me go to the top here. Gene expression analysis of peripheral blood leukocytes to develop expression profile that accurately reflect prior radiation exposure. Interesting. And here's the publication related to that. The protocol, samples, experimental factors, show table. OK. What I'm interested, detailed sample information and links to data. OK, let's see the data. I want the data, all right? I want to do my research. I want to be to see if I'm able to get the OK. We have, OK, these are the samples. Very nice. So these are the samples. Indeed, we have 56 samples as they were uh, listed here. That is nice. And then um, go back. This is the 56 sample counts. And I uh, can download a each. Very nice. So you, you can doubt you can see here that you have the raw data and this is microarray, right? You, you, you don't know what a site is. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, CY5 means the fluorescence, right? And so directly, you know, this is a microarray uh, experiment, and then we can download the raw data files, or we can download the table, the process table. Save some time if we are, you know, if we're, not, if we're not interested in processing raw data. And you can do this for 56 samples. And not only this, we should have also, I believe, what, uh, some annotations about these samples, maybe like uh, labeling. Um, yeah, maybe they will be in, in the process file, like the annotation, what are, what those are exactly, treatment, control group. Okay, maybe these one and two labels are going to mean something, okay? So uh, those labels would be useful to do some statistical analysis and so on and so forth. Okay, so these are two databases related to uh, <clears throat> experiment, experiment, uh, experiments results, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, we'll have looked into, uh, you know, um, uh, gene expression omnibus array express from ABI, very nice, powerful, and nice databases. There is what's called, um, there is what's called all of gene expression, all of gene expression, uh, database. So let me show you this one. OK. OK, well, I need to get all of gene expression. It's an integrated index. We'll see what is that. OK. Let me jump here to the URL. It is from Japan. OK, so it's interesting. Uh, United States, Europe, Japan are, uh, you know, contributing a lot to bioinformatics databases and tools. Let me click here on English. And this is what do we see in this uh, resource. So this all gene expression uh, is an integrated index. Uh, so gene expression data has been uh, archived as microarray or RNA-seq in, in gene expression omnibus and array express. In 2018, the DNA Data Bank of Japan started similar repository that they call gene expression archive. 
that is GEA. And those are very useful uh, resources for all of these uh, different types of experiments. Okay. Um, the, the, there was an issue when it comes to RNA seq data, okay, uh, because they are RNA seq data is separately maintained by these different uh, resources, and uh, <clears throat> although these databases are useful for knowing uh, functional interpretations of the genes, meaning you know GEO array express or uh, genomic expression archive from Japan, there is the issue of integration that we always face in uh, bioinformatics. Those are very nice resources. What about having a reference to bring them together? So the AOE or all of gene expression uh, index is constructed um, uh, in this visual way that you see here by collecting gene expression data from by RNA-seq from different uh, places and try to bring them uh, together, together, okay? A or E, this tool, all gene expression, includes data not included in gene expression and also uh, array express. Okay, so let's let's interact with this tool. And so you will see it uh, here. Um, uh, um, let me put here some term. I don't know. Let's let's do cancer search. Okay. Any results? Okay, I get 12,000 results for cancer. Okay, what about doing radiation again? Yeah, there are 525 results. So, and you have the technology side. So, if I come down here, I want to focus more on Homo sapiens. Okay. Uh, okay, I want to retrieve the experiments, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I want to retrieve the experiments using, okay, here where I can interact with the species. Okay, I click on this. I guess so. Okay. Uh-huh. Then when I use, I'm going to uh, use Illumina. I'm just interacting with that, so let me say retrieve. It's going to bring me just a chunk of this data or everything. Okay, 40 items found. We'll compare this into running the full thing. So you see this is coming from GEO, Gene Expression Omnibus. Some of them are not, and so on and so forth. So I have these number of samples that I can go and download. Certainly, if I have the Gene Expression Omnibus, I can go there. It's Illumina High Sig and download the data. So what else? If I go back and just say radiation and just retrieve everything, yeah, I have then data from Array Express, Gene Expression, Omnibus, and so on and so forth. So it's a nice tool, okay, trying to bring summary of information from, uh, you know, the bigger ones and try to make it accessible, categorized, organized. So if you search for some term, you can hover here, interact, and then uh, try to gain some insights information. Um, um, okay. What else I want to show you is, oops, uh, is the SRA, okay? SRA database, which is from NCBI, okay? Now, SRI, uh, SRA is the sequence read archive. What we have looked into before is a gene uh, uh, expression omnibus, array express, uh, you know, the all of gene expression, trying to, you know, categorize those. This is more on the sequence files, okay? And so it is more of a centralized repository for storing high throughput sequencing data. That is whole genome sequencing, transcriptomics, RNA-seq, metagenomics, and more. And usually the type of data that are in uh, SRA are raw sequence data. And they have the quality scores assigned from next generation sequencing, whether that's coming from Illumina, PacBio, Oxford Nanopore, and so on and so forth. So lots of interesting uh, data is here. And um, it's more for raw sequence data 
as compared to gene expression uh, omnibus, where you may find processed version of the data sometimes. OK, so um, let's say again cancer here. Let's see if we put cancer what's going to happen. You'll find maybe studies about cancer, perhaps um, you know, uh, one way also to search this here is to put the name of some gene. OK, let me. Put here BRCA1. OK, let me access some files. This is Illumina Nova 6, 6000. Nice. So here you have you find information about the categorization here. This is BRCA1 cancer as well. You can find all of these interesting results. So this is this is sequence related information from Illumina. Telling, you, know, you can look into the metadata here, the study type, the specific sample of interest, the library that was used. So let's go into the run here and see what information we can get as part of this sequence read archive. OK, so we can go and see. Number of bases, the size for the study and. Let's see the reads number of reads here, so this is really you see the depth here. It's more into diving into the sequence. And here we get the reads for that specific sample experiment. We can download the FASTQ file. This runs exceed, yes. So we can probably use this RA toolkit to download runs locally. Yeah, so what if, if I click here? All I want is to download the FASTQ file. Download for experiments, okay. Yeah. So it's more than five gigabytes. That's why it's asking us to use the SRA toolkit. OK, it's something that can be downloaded from GitHub, interact with it. So this is really nice. And you see a very interesting set of data files and sequences that one can interact with and, um, you know, try to download and see, uh, um, uh, see, uh, if you can do some pre-processing, it could be that a group of those are related to the same experiment. So, uh, you know, um, or study. OK, so something to look into as part of the database. But again, you are able to search using gene a study and so on and so forth. What about radiation study here as compared to those ones? Yeah, we have Illumina High 6. And you see, this is more of uh, next generation sequencing data. Gene expression omnibus, you'll find microarray there because it started gene expression omnibus as a microarray repository or database. OK, nice. OK, so you can look further at some of the information. A number of bases in this uh, file, the size of the file. So let me see if I go directly here. And in this archive, and again, we have some information. If you want to download this, yes, I can download this. Now I want the FASTQ file because my students can handle it and derive the quality scores. OK, I got this in the uh, pop up. Very nice. OK, so this is SRA and it has, you know, SRA is huge, by the way, is huge. So information from uh, it's 40 percent of it is RNA sick, 50 uh, percent about genomes. So if you're interested to get, uh, you know, genome files, uh, um, prokaryote and metagenome, 10 percent of it, it has six beta bytes. OK, imagine this. OK, a beta byte is a 1000 terabyte. OK, it's a 1 million gigabytes, so six beta bytes. OK, now two more resources that are uh, very powerful as well. They are more focused on grouping gene expression and trying to highlight uh, 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 details related to um, 
uh, uh, human, okay? So there is the uh, genotype tissue expression database, G GTXS database, gene tissue expression, gene, okay, let me do this, gene tissue expression database, okay, that's the GTEX, sorry, it's E gene tissue expression database, this is the one, okay, this is one, um, Uh, valuable uh, resource and project uh, uh, that's trying to highlight the relationship between genetic variation and gene expression across different human genome tissues. Okay, across different human genome tissues. Let me look here. Uh, the other one that I want to show you is uh, TCGA, the Cancer Genome Atlas TCGA database. That is you know, for anyone interested in cancer genomics, of course, they know what is TCGA. That is the biggest repository for um, cancer-related experiments. It has 2.5 petabytes of genomic, epigenomic, transcriptomic, or proteomic data. Very interesting, very powerful. Uh, of course, you get all you need. Well, all you need in the sense that is, uh, uh, you know, thousands of experiments are deposited here. Uh, when it comes to gene expression data. Um, if I put here breast cancer, for example, of course, there are types of breast cancers, okay, like inflammatory breast cancer that popped up thus there. And I want to access some data, okay. Um, let me go back here. Uh, am I at the TCGA? Okay, access TCGA data. Okay, let me go to here. So this is the more general website there. Except, okay, nice. Now, this is one of the nice things that, you know, when you look at GTX, you are interacting with the tissues, okay, the organs and so on and so forth. So you can look into, as you see, it's group of experiments here, single cell expression and so on and so forth. So I can browse here, BRCA1, and then, you can see the gene uh, kind of expression. So this is the ensemble ID, assigned ID, uh, which is, again, a unique identifier for this gene as compared to the gene label or name. And then across a group of tissues, we see the expression here. And this is cells, lymphocytes, okay, lymphocytes as compared to, what is this tissue here? Okay, this one, colon, cervix, and so on and so forth. So it's really nice to interact with. You see different things that, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, transcripts, I think it's this transcript per million read or so. So this is more of reflecting the counts uh, across tissues on experiments. So very nice visualization. These are like, two of my best resources to see how you can interact with the different, uh, you know, visualizations. Mm. And then here we can also access data, like let's do this BRCA1, okay. And of course you can download full experiments, uh, gene expression data, right? You will see a group of many experiments. You'll see also a link that some results coming, you know, okay, this is from TCGA. Um, okay, and um, yeah, you'll find the chromosome information when I look into the specific changes and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Okay, diseases, copy number variation for that specific project, and you know, it's very nice because. You know, I, I'm not going to dive into this in very in-depth in details because uh, uh, of two reasons. Uh, the first reason is it's going to be very interesting once you have a specific gene, and then everything would be meaningful. Now, as I go through this, many things would seem, you know, uh, extra, okay? But when you that, you know, that we, one gene 
we need to focus on one gene or group of genes, you know that it really matters to go and try to collect as much information as we have. Second reason is that although I've looked into these databases, I've used them before, I did not make an intense use of them, okay? Uh, so I don't want to be unfair with these databases. They are very powerful. I know that they are widely used. Uh, personally, I know TCGA is one of the biggest resources for cancer genomics uh, uh, database, data and studies. So here you have 28,000 and, you know, Mostly, I approach this with the computer science mentality where I go download the files of many samples and then start processing from there on removing my codes. So there are sources of lots of data for me. Exploration here and they have now analysis. These are new features. So you can explore the data by, you know, looking at specific project that you're interested in disease type. So, for example, plasma cell tumors, and then you have access to, uh, you know, gender related information and vital status, primary status. And based on that, OK, you can go to the case here and then see the related information and look at DNA changes. What else samples? Very good. <clears throat> and so you can download this information as a JSON file, uh, which is explaining the sample ID, OK? and giving everything about that, treatment, diagnosis, and so on and so forth. Very nice. So, Gene Expression Omnibus started as microarray. Array Express is a very powerful uh, resource as well uh, for gene expression studies. Uh, if you want, like, a tool that's also being updated where it can, you know, ease of you, your access, I would say look into this and those also. Okay, that is gene expression and array expression. Uh, there is GTA X portal. If one is, you know, interested to go to human directly and they want to interact with tissue specific information. So now you want to go with something related to tissue. OK, single cell experiments. This is where you come. More tissue related cancer genomics. You come to this resource. OK, so let's move on. And now we have a few more databases actually a bunch of them um what i want to highlight next is what's referred to as uh <clears throat> let me see here variance databases okay variant databases um often we're referring to genetic or genomic variance databases those are databases that um, collect, curate, and provide information about the genetic variations. Okay, what are we talking about here? SNPs, insertions, deletions, copy number variations, and other types of genetic uh, variations. And there are notable databases here like dbSNP, ClinVar, Genome AD, HDMD, uh, EXAC, and exome, that is Exome Aggregation Consortium. Okay, so many many databases okay um i want to show you also uh one of the these databases or maybe a couple so clinvar database why do we care about variants so this is this is under ncbi and this is a treasure hunt question for you why I'm coming to this data or what case or scenario I would be interested to uh, come and examine such kind of uh, tool. OK, so there is ClinVar and then there is another one that is called ClinGen database. OK, let's look into that as well. OK. So now we're looking into variance databases. These are two nice variance databases. So what I'm going to do here and again, I want you to think why would we why would uh, be anyone interested in finding the variance and why do we have such a huge again repositories for those so let me put this for you prca1 gene here and see what information we have and this gene here okay we get what information do we get okay this is the record here let's dive into it we have curations that is what's cool about this 
to databases creations. Now, I like this visualization so much, so I'm going to talk a little bit about it. OK, so here you find an uh, ClinVar, OK, there's Clin, uh, sorry, this is ClinVar and this is ClinGen, OK, these are two. Again, they are both uh, uh, initiatives related to uh, understanding uh, clinical genetic data uh, serving different purposes. OK, ClinGen is the clinical genome resources and it's a program aimed at building uh, a central resource that define relevance of genes and variants. Now, there is ClinVar that collects information on variants, and there's ClinGen that goes beyond just collecting variant data. It focuses on creating genes and uh, as uh, providing, for example, more on the disease-related uh, side uh, information and annotation, okay? Uh, here you would have in ClinGen um, <clears throat> a curated list of clinically relevant genes. So both are very val valuable resources. And to give uh, the context of the discussion here, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to discuss one thing uh, with you so that you understand why these are very valuable resources when it comes to variants. Now, imagine we have a patient and that patient is diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, for example. And part of the protocol is to do genetic testing. And genetic testing is going to screen the sample, the blood sample, for example, coming from that patient and recognize specific uh, set of genes. The whole study is going to focus, for example, on roughly about 18 genes. I'm aware of a recent gene expression or genetic testing for one uh, breast cancer patient uh, that had 18 genes screened for them. Now, each gene, for example, BRC1, uh, as an once we get the sample, once we get the gene sequence information, what do we gonna do next? Is we gonna come to a database with the list of variants that are categorized. For example, if it is pathogenic, if this gene variant. So we have the gene sequence here, and we know this is the area of BRCA1 from that patient. So we extract that sequence, okay? And we download that sequence from the SRA archive. I'm interested specifically in that sequence for that specific patient, for example. Not a wide, you know, genome-wide association study. Only specific that case patient, one sample. I want to look at specifically that specific single gene. Now, what I want to do, I certainly want to align this into other documented variants. One of these variants is pathogenic, means we know that that specific mutation or that specific sequence uh, variation is linked to the disease. Okay, sometimes it is likely pathogenic, sometimes it's uncertain significance. So there is some mutation here in this specific gene uh, but we're not able to say to what, what extent it's significant. And sometimes likely benign or benign, it means there's no issue with that. Uh, it's not, it's going to be fine. So, in fact, these are the outcomes that come to the patient in the genetic testing as part of the protocol of cancer treatment. They would tell them something very similar to this because they are using these kinds of databases to tell the patient, you know what? For one of your mutations in that specific gene, for example, MCH7, that's related to ovary cancer, it's unrecognized or uncertain uh, significance. And then they will make this recommendation, talk to us in two, three, four, five years. Maybe you have an updated database to tell us if that's still significant or becoming to be benign or pathogenic based on the analysis database. So variance databases are really important and powerful to recognize these kind of information. Okay. Now I'm moving to, you know, I keep saying they are very nice, very powerful, uh, but this is, you are a bioinformatician. You, what I would advise you is as you go through this lecture, really go and visit these databases and try to use them in your own research. Everything here, all these websites are ones that you should be aware of as a bioinformatician. If you really want to graduate from a bioinformatics program, you come with a set of tools, okay? You have your own toolbox, and you have come with a set of tools. 
part of that is knowledge of existing uh, databases. And I tell you in the I would tell you in the domain of bioinformatics, you have to keep reading. OK, so there might tomorrow might come another database that you should be aware of. OK, but again, these are the top most widely used databases. And as I give this intro, I certainly want to uh, share with you. Uh, uh, functional annotation databases. Kick database, there is no question from Japan is on top of that list. They have done a neat work. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to think of any initiative that will give us access to pathway database as KIG has been doing. OK, so KIG is this huge uh, repository for us categorizing genes on specific pathway. And again, uh, pathway would refer to set of interactions. We're going to see this. Uh, there are full biological processes, right? One gene is going to impact another gene. There are some chemicals in between and so on and so forth. And then we have a full uh, metabolic pathway. Those were manually built, curated, very interesting visualizations were made. And then set of information was, uh, you know, grouped for us to be able to look into and understand. At the same time, the gene ontology resource Gene ontology uh, resource is uh, going to get us to discuss uh, the gene ontology concept. And this is a standardized system to describe and categorize the functions of genes and their uh, products. OK, so um, if I have one gene, I want to understand, OK, it is upregulated or downregulated. I see it's differentially expressed genes. I get another couple of uh, differential extra genes, but by the end of the day, we want to understand how can we uh, have uh, uh, functional annotation? How can we describe the functional reflection, the phenotypic aspect uh, by the end of the day of having uh, these uh, top differential express genes, a group of genes that are interacting? Well, if the, the idea in bioinformatics or let's say the typical way of analysis has been to look into pathways or gene ontologies because both of these initiatives are grouping these genes together. So for example, if I have three genes that I know they are differentially expressed and they are on the same pathway or under the umbrella or group of one type of category, gene ontology category, I can say that gene ontology category is more uh, important. Or I can then dive into explaining the relevancy in terms of a specific biological process. So let me give an example here. Gene uh, Omni uh, Gene Ontology Resource. Uh, let's look here into again BRCA1 gene. And let's put here BRC1 gene. Let's see what uh, we're going to get in both of those ontology. Yes, I want to see the ontology part. OK, the grouping here. Let me click here, dive into this. So give me all information related to this one. OK, so it's going to tell me that this is the gene ontology uh, uh, class. That's the gene product. It's central here in different species. OK, I'm going to show you another tool that would make sense for us and to how we can extract data from this. This is the map here. This is the pathway, kick pathway for breast cancer. So let me uh, click here and go to the pathway map. And see here that we have signaling pathway and set of interactions that are, you know, being where PRCA1 is part of. And this is like a map, OK, of you have androgen receptor here, and so on and so forth. This is when one would dive into this, the biochemical chemistry part, try to understand why, okay, why a couple of my, uh, diff you know, I have a patient, I know a couple of genes are there as being differentially expressed, but under what process? So here we start looking into a specific signaling pathway or specific, uh, you know, uh, gene uh, ontology that we are working uh, with and gene ontologies in general 
Okay, gene ontology is regenerable are categorized into biological process, molecular function that describes uh, molecular activities of the gene product at the biochemical level, and cellular components. So um, uh, let me search for a specific gene ontology here. Let me go back and use this term. Okay, for example, it's gene ontology. 000750. Okay, let me go to the linked information here. And okay, I have no information. Well, let me try to look into again. Let's search this cell cycle arrest. Which gene ontology is part of that? Okay. And ontologies, by the way, they were uh, initiatives related to, okay, this is the one I guess. Let me look into this. Uh, they were experts that went into developing these gene ontologies. So, you know, this categorization of information was very well done in gene ontology resource and kick pathway that experts that, uh, you know, with the proper background came together and tried to group these concepts together okay so in this concept here of uh, my toric cell cycle the ontology is under the biological process so this is one of the example of biological process we will have a group of genes uh, uh, highlighting uh, that specific uh, biological process so i think i'm uh, what i'm going to show you is may may make sense for you in terms of an analysis so let me jump here into network analyst again i've shown this tool before and i'm going to link this to gene ontology and kick pathway which uh, so these two were processed the information from them were taken and then used as knowledge bases and gene and network analyst let me show you how so i'm going to try some example for gene expression analysis Okay, I'm going to proceed here. I have some data. I've went through this uh, uh, some time before. I'm going to do it quickly. Let me let me do some quantile normalization. Normalize data to apply some differential expression analysis. Let me move ahead. Okay, here we have the conditions for this primary factor androgen receptor. Go ahead. How many significant genes? Do we get to get 465 genes? Now, this is the point. I know that I have 465 genes uh, that are differentially expressed. On top of them is PCNA. I can go to NCPI and read more about this gene. Okay, find the full report about this gene here. Okay. All the information and so on and so forth that we're interested to know about. And yet, I don't know what farther, how can I um, interpret the results here? I need more analysis. I need some functional annotation. Let me limit the number of genes here a little bit. Okay, 148 genes. So I'm going to proceed farther. And let me use which one here? It's going to visualize intersection of the results. Nope. Uh, visualize functional categories. We can use the enrichment network. Um, let me go here actually to the volcano plot. Okay. So here you find there is a query. So they have a list of genes, differentially expressed genes, and this is KIG database. So KIG. This is the kick database here. So information of pathways were extracted and put here. Uh, what I find is that 17 of my 128 differentially expressed gene or 148 were part of the DNA replication pathway. And so I can come here. It's up to you to go and, you know, if I don't know if I click here. Yes, but I can come back here and say DNA 
replication pathway. Okay, and here you go. This is the DNA replication uh, map. Okay, I have a description for that. And one can access the full map. And so this information, uh, yep. Yes, this is an illustration of DNA replication. What I'm looking for is, let me go back, name DNA replication. Uh, pathway okay so it might be this one although i guess it's going to be a slightly different uh from the metabolic pathway maybe okay we look here do i have dna okay replication and repair is it the same one maybe it is then yeah okay so this is the DNA replication pathway with that information. So when extracted, you know, there are a, par, a set of genes or uh, enzymes, uh, you know, uh, taking role here. So anyway, in here where I can bring the results together and see that top uh, processes as part of the kick pathways. And this is one way. So when I click, you see, when I click here, I see the list of genes related to this. Drug metabolism. What about going to gene ontology? So there is gene ontology biological processes. Let me click on that and say submit and see how my the top differential expression genes are going to relate to biological processes from gene ontology. So we have cell cycle phase, 53 hits. Okay. And we have different phases, DNA metabolic process again. What about molecular functions? And we have ATB binding and so on and so forth. Those are helpful to point me at the direction, you know, they are not the most significant genes, but the most significant terms from the gene ontologies or cake pathway. There are other resources like uh, reactome, which is also, uh, you know, very valuable resource, panther. And so if I go to reactome here, It's a very powerful react, uh, uh, database for pathway annotations, and one can come here as well, and especially if you're interested in functional annotation, that is taking your analysis a step farther and diving more into what is this about, okay? What is this about? Meaning my top genes, which pathway or process they relate to. So X network analyst is a very nice tool that summarizes every uh, all of that information here at the end and gives you that automatic step to build that. There is David database. Now this is in CBI and uh, you know David <laughs> is there from generations. Let me go back and actually show you like in bioinformatics. I think this would be the most famous tool, especially with this with this bluish greenish uh, title here every bioinformatician have um, has probably come through uh, david at certain stage now i'll show you what is nice about david so a uh, few things this is somebody about david tool let me click on start analysis one of the things I like, I don't know, this is like my own personal feeling. What do you see here in terms of uh, uh, graphical interface? This is, seems still outdated as compared to the uh, contemporary graphical interface, but I prefer to see this one and they compliment that they kept the interface, uh, although it's very functional and very powerful, okay? Uh, it brings interesting inside the history and how, how powerful this tool uh, is one of the top widely used tools okay so i can use an example take the transcript ids here i want to do some functional annotations they are um select species okay oops paste the list okay uh gene list submit well let me see what's going to happen the, okay, they have demo list one. Okay, let me use this demo list one. Okay, and so if you have list of significant genes or transcripts, you can come here and do some functional annotation. It is a tool that is going to bring to us ontologies, kick pathways, and other information as well. Let's see 
I believe it's going to summarize information from those. Why well, it's, it's taking a little bit of time, and maybe the example here. Let me click, try to jump into another example. Okay. David, I don't want the complicated one. Okay. What happens now if I go back? Start analysis and then um, let me click on upload demo list to. Okay, we get it faster, so something is there. So now when I click here, I can put the functional annotation tool. This is what I'm interested with. Yes, we have like disease related genes, almond diseases, wow. So this is like, you know, all databases that we went through can come together, regene ontologies, pathways, you have kick, uh, biocarta, reactome, wow, this is really nice. And then uh, let's get the functional annotation table or chart. Okay, the chart is in a pop-up. Let me see. Yeah, it's also in a pop-up. So, uh, yeah, you try this, you will see. Well, let me have a treasure hunt question for this because I'm now recording the Chrome here, and if this is coming as a pop-up, I don't think it's being captured on my screen. So tell me what did you find there, okay? And if it is similar to what you see here in this table, okay? Uh, this is a treasure hunt question. Now, one of the things that David is widely used uh, for, if I go back, gene function, gene ID conversion tool. Like, you know, this is to go, okay? This is like the de facto tool uh, or to go with tool for any, as you know now, we have ensemble gene IDs. They have uh, entries, gene IDs. We have riff sick gene IDs, right? So sometimes you need a tool to convert between those for standardized annotation. So with that, um, we have also went through different databases for functional annotations. Very nice. Um, yeah. I think one database that's also should be one that we look into here. Let me see. Ensemble database, Ensemble Genome Browser. So Ensemble is this huge resource for us uh, to download, uh, you know, for example, if you want genome annotation files. Uh, remember, when we have done uh, alignment, we needed the genome annotation file. Sometimes you want the transcriptome file. You go to Ensemble, okay? Ensemble, this uh, huge resource and huge database giving us uh, a chance again to um, Uh, it, it is part of European Bioinformatics uh, Institute, okay, uh, ensemble. So um, let's look here, all species. Let's try something like BRCA2. Result summary again. I'm searching uh, using the gene information. And then you see, this is lots of things. Show transcript table. You find then uh, base pairs here, name, transcript ID. So this is useful to map uh, genes, okay, gene names. Usually the experiments or some tools that we get, maybe you can recognize these transcript IDs and so on and so forth. And here we come to, you know, this is one of the famous visualizations here in, uh, in Ensemble uh, because we can compare several. You can see also the ontologies here, which is nice, okay. Cellular component, biological process, molecular functions. That also it has a set of tools Okay, and Ensemble Genome Browser, okay? So it has, uh, let me show you, but actually before I go to Genome Browser, oh, I can maybe click here, sorry. Okay, let me go back here and yes, I'm going to click on this one, see what do we get here, yeah. 
Ensemble comes with this genome uh, browser, can illustrate the chromosome, the genome information, the genes, and so on and so forth. And so if one is interested with some annotations at that specific area in a visual way, this is where you come. Ensemble makes it very interesting, trying to highlight phenotypes, you know, uh, and variants and, uh, and context information and so on and so forth. Um, what I want to show you is if I go back to here database, um, let me say, for example, let me look into human here, okay, and genome assembly. You can access genome assembly, comparative genomics, and you can, you see here, you have GDF5, GFF3, those the ones we can use for our alignment. So you can come, let me click here what I'm going to see. Okay. So we have access to all of these files for all the species and depending on our need and the specific uh, pipeline, we can come here and download the files that we're looking at. Okay. So that's it. There are more data out there. There are now what's called, called Biobank. It's UK Biobank. Um, it's uh, bringing uh, data about thousands of uh, uh, patients. Uh, this is part of population data. Um, uh, and there is, um, you know, similar to the Human Genome Project, there's uh, more initiatives. There is Genomics England trying to get 1,000, 100,000 genomes. There is now in the States 1 million uh, um, genomes project. Uh, and uh, um, uh, I guess um, uh, there is this project as well in Mexico, uh, MCPS, Mexico st study, uh, I had a cohort of 150,000 adults. Also, they uh, got the information, uh, genome information, tried to document and analyze. I'm aware that different countries are working on their own genome projects and trying to get, uh, you know, more data and more data is going to come, especially as the technology is boosted. So I hope you have enjoyed this module and this lecture and understand something about uh, databases. Okay. And my last question for you is which part you liked most? Or let me say which database uh, did you find very useful, would be very useful for your own analysis? Referring here to maybe your own lab, uh, your own research, and so on and so forth. I would be interested to know if this database is one you have already used before or it is one that, uh, you know, was introduced uh, newly for you. Okay, good luck guys and see you soon.